What's up guys and welcome back to another video. This week we're gonna bring you guys inside um, to one of our members videos. If you guys haven't heard or don't know anything about the channel what we did this past season, we actually moved a lot of our musky content to a members only platform. But this is one of the videos that is posted on there and I kind of want to show you guys um, on the public page here kind of what we're doing in that membership and things that you know we kind of talk about and how we go a lot more in depth than a lot of the videos I've posted in the past. So we're going to bust out the whiteboard for this specific video. This is a really cool three fish day with my buddy Tristan um, on Lake of the Woods in some really adverse conditions. We've got high skies, bluebird, um, wind, and then uh, just really weird water. We had super high water last year in Lake of the Woods, late spring, late summer. The water is still really cold, but we end up catching three fish on this day and we're going to go through kind of some of the reasons of why I picked the spots that I did why the baits that we had were working and then kind of the things that went into why we had success in this specific day that was uh, pretty tough conditions overall. So let's dive in. So this is a pretty crazy bite. I had um, no rights even catching this fish, but the layout of this spot was pretty, pretty standard. Kind of what you'd look for in, you know, uh, in your normal musky spot. This specific spot, it has a name, it's called Charlie's. It's kind of what I've heard people call it in the past, but basically it's a big island that has a point off the one end. And then off of this point, kind of how the contour runs is there's a big extension off the end and it kind of hooks out this way and then comes back and runs around so you've got your trees here and then what was happening is we had a, a strong wind come in this direction and what i actually did and the mistake that i made is as i was running the boat here um, along this spot we were casting and wanted to wrap around the tip and normally they either come from right here on the tip or they do like to come from kind of this point as well because there's kind of a high spot out here um, and it kind of seems like they come off this extension or they kind of come off the saddle between the high point and then the point itself of the island. So as I was running the boat, um, I was running the boat here and what I end up doing is actually run up on the spot itself. Um, and I get really shallow. I mean, granted, this is normally like say four feet of water, um, but the boat got up into about eight feet of water, which was not ideal um, because that high spot is right here where a lot of these fish come from. And I kind of came in with my tube and kind of did like an L turn and I ran up on the spot and I was actually leaning over to my graph to hit a waypoint, you know, to tell myself to stay more so out in this area here so that obviously I don't run over the spot and make more of a turn out before I go around it. It's kind of a tricky spot to run. I fished it a bunch. I just, I don't know, I spaced on it. Um, I didn't have a prior waypoint on that corner, but so I was literally bent over, you know, putting in this waypoint on my graph. And then it was crazy because the bait was just kind of sitting there. And then for some reason, like as I'm bent over, I kind of like, make an outside turn and there must have been a fish just sitting behind my bait and then the thing just eats the tube um, from behind. It's actually a pretty decent fish and I didn't really have I say, any rights catching this fish but that's kind of how the spot laid out. Wind blowing point um, and then that'll actually this scenario is going to feed into the next fish we catch right after this. All right I had no rights catching this fish. I'm all discombobulated. My camera was dead. I kind of like ran up on the spot and I was like leaning over and putting a waypoint on it because I think we've, we've got four foot high water, but I got up into like eight feet of water, which normally is four. Um, so I just went to lay down a waypoint to make sure the next time I went around this, I stayed wide enough and the fish just ate my bait. I got, it was just sitting here. Like I'd already done a figure eight and everything. So that was weird. Um, but I don't know, I guess I never get that lucky. So maybe I was due for one. But that's on that same ninja tube i caught that four footer on yesterday smaller profile a little bit of a cold front water is 69.9 right now seven and a half inch tube and then that blade on the back 
and maybe that was just sitting there you know throwing a little bit of light around that was just enough to get her to bite i have no idea i didn't see it happen i don't know what happened um, but t was fast in the net thankfully I, I can't give credit to anything because of the fish like this one caught me <laughs> actually not a bad fish either like a 44 maybe 45 incher on the tube the thing catches fish for me i don't have to move it it's just ridiculous sweet okay i know i know whoa, whoa, whoa. okay you good she's good not ideal but if they're gonna flop like that at least get them away from the boat so their head doesn't hit the boat She's obviously good and ready to go, but nothing about that fish was like textbook. <laughs> One more, <clears throat> vomit back, oh, fish. He's not going anywhere, he's pegged. He's pegged. Say one more right back Bump towards back. that rock. Wow. Sick. Tubing. Tube. Just back here tubing. Pretty one. All right, so this spot, guys, is very similar to the one I just fished. This might have been the next spot or two spots later after I just caught that other fish. And kind of how this one laid out. Um, Basically, there's a point that comes down like this. And then off this point, there's one rock, actually two rocks. One is right here. That's normally out of the water. And then there's another one like right here. Um, these are both underwater by a couple of feet just due to the high water levels. And then basically where the boat was is we had the boat here. And as we were running the boat around this spot, we were casting. Wind was coming at this direction right here. But as we came around this spot, we were right about here. And I told Tristan, you know, one more cast. I wanted him to kind of bomb one back behind over here behind that rock to kind of get any of that stuff that was wrapping around. Normally your fish are going to be in that front facing side. The deeper water's out here. This is kind of a shallow bay up in here. But the fish generally come off of this front facing side. So we we're just going to make one more cast. And I wanted Tristan to kind of get one, that bucktail up here behind this rock. Um, and then where I got bit was somewhere right in here, kind of right off, kind of almost where you'd expect him to come from, maybe just a little bit around the point. Um, but that again was on that same tube with that blade on the back. Um, and that seven and a half inch profile I think was a big deal for this day. Just that smaller profile the day before um, this, I caught a four footer on that bait um, and it was just really, really good. So that was something you downsized a little bit, but then having the blade, a little bit of flash, a little bit of thump, and this isn't a very big one by any means, but just a solid fish added to our pattern, small bite window, and just went to another spot that was really similar to the one we just caught a fish on prior and, you know, trying to continue that pattern throughout the day. It was like kind of like my first up rip, I think. Up rip. Okay, 9.30, another one on the tube. That one bit, I think, on my first up rip. This one, I would actually take credit for catching. The other one, I can't, but 10 foot, extra heavy uh, stealth. This is the new rod from Thorne. I've been talking a lot about it. I absolutely love this rod. It's got a little bit more, it's a little bit more moderate, so you get a little more bend, a little bit further into your blank, um, but I, I really like it. I feel, I don't, I'm, I, it's not more sensitive, but I feel like I can feel a little bit better what's going on. Um, it's got a little more feel to it throughout the blank and it's a lot lighter than our Predator as well and at a better price point for you guys. So if you guys are in the market for new rod, highly suggest looking into the Stealth Series. We can make them whatever length you want. I like the 10s. You can do nine foot eight, nine foot six, nine foot three and three eighths, whatever you want. They're custom made, one by one, hand built for you guys. I do a 19 inch rear with a small flare four and a half inch half wells foregrip palm style reel seat and standard guides is what i run for my right up on my rod i get a lot of questions about that but another fish on the ninja tube the seven and a half inch or like i said a little bit smaller cold front high skies tough fishing conditions um and that one 
absolutely smoked it here in the back. This thing's getting pretty beat up, but I do have another one. Might have to switch it out. That was a cool bite on the up rip. Change of direction. Spunky. Not a big one, but just a small lake of the woods. 37 incher tube muncher. When you're quick with them, they go quick. Back to fishing. Keep going. Got it? Nice. Got it! Oh, buddy! <laughs> That's what you wanted! Hell yeah! Oh, sick. Came in! Ha! Oh, God, man. <laughs> that was the goal. That was cool. Hell yeah! Okay, well, you had her hooked like kind of. She had one in the mouth yeah. and the other one in the top of the head. Yeah. She had all kind of leverage. So she was. She had a ton of power on you. She's all charged up too. <laughs> Hot. Hot. Like, right, right behind you. Yeah. That's why you burn a blade all day long, it's for that right there. You did great too. I'm not gonna lie, I, I hit the leader, I think. Did you? Close. Yeah, I came very close. No, close is good, you just don't wanna you just don't wanna hit it. So this fish was pretty cool. This was uh, a figure eight fish for Tristan and I fish with Tristan quite a bit and a lot of our fishing is on Green Bay and Tristan does a good amount of fishing on his own as well, but he had never actually caught a musky boat side in a figure eight and that was just kind of a goal of his. Um, so we kind of planned this trip around trying to get him some figure eight fish. It's funny because the day before he catches two fish on a bucktail in the front of the boat, but they're both out on the cast, which for Lake of the Woods is pretty rare, but it just kind of goes, I think if you are catching fish out on the cast on your baits, it generally just says, that you're, you're fishing the right lure. The fish really like your, you know, the vibration or the, the color, the size, all that stuff. So the day before he was doing really well in the staggers and then this fish here is on an eight, nine stagger as well in a gold color. And I really like the gold stuff um, when it's sunny out. And I think the sun adds to that, you know, either your golds or silvers, a little more of your natural colors. I like to get more into like the green. You guys always know I like to throw the black and green. I like that more so on your cloudy days. Um, but when you get a high sun like this, clear skies, really sunny, I like more of that flash from a silver or gold blade. And then this had a gold skirt in the back, but he, he did great. He came in on the figure eight, he saw the fish coming, you know, came in, he got an inside, threw it out in the outside corner, nice and slow, big 10 foot rod, stretched way out, threw it up in the corner and just fish ate it first, first corner, first opportunity, just textbook figure eight. You wouldn't have known this. This is his first one he had caught, but this spot laid out again, super similar. Um, just going off of our wind pattern, basically the way this spot laid out, there's an island basically like this. The wind is coming up like that. And then off this island here, if this is our break line, there's a bit of an extension that comes off of it. In the summertime, I would say a lot of these fish are more so on the first break line. I do catch them here in the fall, more out on the extension. Um, in the deeper months, you know, where when our fish are hanging a lot deeper, but in the summer, generally it's this, this first break line or this is the, the island itself. Um, this particular fish came from right about here, right where that wind is hitting. This is actually a current spot as well. So there's some current that's coming up here and hitting this island. 
and that fish was sitting right up tight to shore there and it came in super hot like i said did everything exactly right but all of our fish came off of windblown structure for this specific day that was our pattern that we were running running around the lake doing and going with and i like to have a bucktail in the front of the boat on lake of the woods in the summer it's so hard not to regardless of sure i caught two fish in a tube earlier um, in the day but at the same time tristan had caught two fish the day before um on that stagger and he it was his confidence bait for him it's what he wanted to fish and i like having that bait going through first in the front of the boat something that's really fast super high hooking percentage and obviously you see a lot of fish on it and then the back of the boat i like to follow it up with something a little bit more pull posy maybe a crankbait this you know in this scenario for this day it was a tube uh, but something a little bit different but i like having that bucktail in the front of the boat especially in lake of the woods in the summer it's just you, you got to have one rolling um, if you are going to throw a twitch bait or something like that, I like to have that in the back of the boat just so that you don't get a fish that's super, super hot coming in, trying to eat or, you know, nip at a twitch bait that's moving and darting and dashing where your bucktail is just such a high hook and percentage bait. It's generally moving in a very steady speed. Um, you know, bucktails are basically just hooks on wire. So very high hook and percentage bait as well. So this was a cool fish. T was super happy with it. And you'll see this guy's got a little bit of a messed up face. It was pretty cool. Tristan came here for one reason, well, two reasons. What are they? What, what, why'd you come to Woods? So, two reasons I came here. I haven't gotten to fish in the eight, top water. All right, so day we're on day two. Yesterday he got two bucktail fish, but they were both out on the cast, which for Woods is not exactly normal. But this is why we came. Figure eight fish, eight, nine stagger, first turn, hot. Tristan's caught way bigger muskies with me and on his own, but this one means something special to him. Oh, he's a snub noser. Oh, Look at his oh, nose, he's a yeah. snub noser. That's the second one. <laughs> Alien predator. Heck yeah. No, that's maybe that's why you had him hooked funny. So you had like one hook hanging in his mouth, and then the back hook was actually like on top of his head. And that's why he fought you so hard, he had so much leverage. Sick. Nice. Thank you, buddy. No problem. Right. Yep, you're good. The snubby. That's like the first. That's the first one I've seen on Lake of the Woods with the snub nose. Your oars. You, you caught the other one in Green Bay on the river. Actually, with, uh, with the musky friends. <laughs> To watch them bite is just as good as it gets. One thing I didn't mention either, guys, is Tristan did a great job of fighting this fish, and he's caught a lot of muskies, has a lot of experience with it, but you'll see when he actually hooks the fish, um, kind of the first thing he does once he gets it hooked is he hit free spool, because that fish was really dogging him. It had that hook kind of back in the corner, and then I think he had the front hook of the bucktail up on top of the fish's nose, and the fish had just all kinds of leverage and power for a you know, low 40 incher that fish really kicked his butt and it was mainly just because of how it was hooked but he did a great job he didn't overpower the fish he was using his free spool he went around the trolling motor he was using his legs kind of um as a drag or you know when that fish really really digs down or dogs down you can kind of bend your knees and give that fish you know some leverage or a little bit of line um with your knees and then he was going all over the boat and just did a great job of always keeping his thumb on the spool after he hit free spool to keep tension on that fish but also not having to worry about if his drag was perfect he knows exactly how much tension he has on that fish with his thumb being on the spool itself and just he did a great great job and then when he had to pull the fish in engage the reel bring it to the net scoop score life's good oh man let's keep going <laughs> sick all right guys so thank you so much for tuning into this week's video if you guys are wanting to get up signed up for the membership page you can do that here on my main page on my youtube channel here we're doing uploads like this every single week at least 52 uploads a year um, not all of them are whiteboard drawings like this some are some aren't um, this one just happened to be one and we, you know i hope hopefully you guys learned something from this video a little bit more in depth i like kind of looking back at this stuff almost like a film study because i don't always notice what went on or kind of what always triggered that bite um, but we've got tons of tackle tips here not always stuff on the water not always fishing a lot of stuff just showing small modifications maybe to get a higher hooking percentage or to get a bait to do you know some different things that helps 
your lures stand out in a crowd of a lot of other fishermen. So thank you guys for tuning in. If you want to get signed up, you can do that here. And hopefully we'll see you guys on the membership.